The pioneers felt betrayed by the Treaty of 1868. They thought prime land had been given to the Indians, and now the Indians were not even using it. War erupted one more time. Nothing more than a drink of your finest General Grant? Whiskey. Yes, ma'am. May I have your autograph? Custer. My daddy says you're going to be president soon. Your daddy is a wise man. Are you little Phil Sheridan? Yes. May I have your autograph, too? Oh. You, you might also want the autograph of this gentleman, General William Tecumseh Sherman, the hero of Atlanta. Do any of you know General Custer? <laughs> we are proud to know him, miss. My daddy says he is a brave Indian fighter and the army should cherish him. You, your daddy is a wise man. Thank you. They love the peacock. I do not understand him. Lord help me, I do not understand his popularity. The youngest Civil War general, brave Indian fighter. Half of his men were killed during battle in the South. And he barely sustained a wound. He was reckless, impulsive, dramatic, indefatigable, vain. Ulysses, what do you think of our idea? The Eastern press will devour us. The Bureau of Indian Affairs over the Department of the Interior has failed. We simply can no longer think of the Indian tribes as independent nations. They have to become citizens, individually responsible to the U.S. law. You want to hold them collectively, not individually responsible. I fought my civil war. And it was long and bloody. You want to repeat it? Fighting Indians instead of rebels? If we are finally to have one nation, sir. A winter campaign sounds costly and dangerous, Phil. The Indians think they're safe in the winter. But they're vulnerable. They have no grass for their ponies, and their food supply is limited, and their villages are virtually immobile. Tell me your plan. We swing three swords at the winter camps along the Washita and the South Canadian River Valley. I launch one column eastward, down the South Canadian. A second column will operate southward toward the Antelope Hills and the head of the Red River. These two columns will act as beaters in for our third and strongest column, the 7th Cavalry. Who will lead the 7th? We want Custer. Custer? He's been suspended from duty. Reinstate him, Ulysses. No, 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 no. He'll charge his men into some sleeping village and commit slaughter. I have always known you as a man who didn't turn back or stop until the thing intended was accomplished. The telegram arrived as we dined with friends. It read, General G.A. Custer, Monroe, Michigan. General Sherman, Sully, and myself, and nearly all the officers of your regiment have asked for you. And I hope that the application will be successful. Can you come at once? Signed, General Philip Sheridan. I'll miss you, Colonels. 
I have been reprimanded, and now I return a humble man. I need a victory. Molly, the train will not wait for you. I'll have you with me before long. I will come when the Seventh Cavalry has had its victory. Think, Tom? Just before you arrived. Home run, you missed it. Lie, well, couldn't hit the side of a barn door. <laughs> Sheridan asked for me. We're glad to have you back, sir. Sherman and Sheridan both. They asked that I return. They need me. The U.S. said it wanted peace. We were given lands. We were to have them for as long as the buffalo roams. When the buffalo was gone, we were to give up our ways and begin to live like the white men. Chief Red Cloud told us how the white men lived. You must put away the wisdom of your fathers, he said. You must lay up food and forget the hungry. When your house is built, your storeroom filled, look for a neighbor and seize all he has. as long as the buffalo roams. By a year's time, the white man broke the promise. <laughs> 